so cold. <laughs> We're up around uh, Mount Field National Park. We've got a hike that we're going to be doing with uh, Reese and Tan. And then we also thought, often when it comes to sort of doing hikes, or, oh, so I, when it comes to doing national parks or anything like that, it ends up throwing a spanner in the works when you do trouble with a dog. So we think we might as well go into a few more details about how we go about that. But right now, man, it's so cold. and get ready to go. All right, that's better. Oh man. Wow, it is so cold. <laughs> Freezing. So we do get asked quite a bit about what it's like to travel full time with Leo. Um, we've had him for almost two years now. Well, I guess like a year and a half, mm. doesn't matter. Um, we've been to a lot of places with him. Um, so we're gonna spend the majority of this video weaving through the answers to our most asked questions and showing you how we go about certain situations with Leo full time. Mm. The biggest thing we get asked as soon as you mention having a dog or they find out we have a dog is like national parks. We were pretty selective with like we got Leo on the road. So we'd already done Tropical North Queensland, the Red Centre, and we'd already done South Australia and Western Australia once. So we were a little bit I guess we'd already seen so much already to where like that was sort of ruled out, particularly like the big ones like Uluru and things like that. So then once we got Leo, it's been more only recently that we've been coming into having to plan far more ahead to still see places that we've never been. So we'll first start off with national parks. Obviously there's a blanket rule in Australia that no dogs allowed in any national parks. So you need to find obviously someone to watch them. Uh, we've been recommended to use the Mad Paws app. We haven't used it yet, but it has come highly recommended. You can hopefully like ask around, find a friend to watch them. Um, a few caravan parks offer pet minding businesses. So they'll, if you're staying at the caravan park, they will watch your dog for you. Made even easier if you do like have like a caravan or something. So you've already got like your dog's home mm. um, in that sense, or someone can mind them for you as well. Yeah, and then there are obviously like kennels and more established places that do that full time. It obviously varies by location, so you have to be willing to kind of just make things work. Um, thankfully, we, like Glenn said, have visited a lot of national parks already, but the ones that we have been wanting to go to, we've had our friends here able to watch them as well. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna go check out National Park in Tasmania and Reese's brother is here with his family. They also live in a van, so cool. Um, they're gonna be watching both of our dogs while we go explore there for the day. Bye, Lay. Could be a good boy today. Yeah. yeah. Goodbye. Have fun with me. Have fun. Good day. Yeah. Did you have a good day? Yeah. Oh man, that was so beautiful. Yeah, that was probably one of the most picturesque hikes that we've done. That was incredible. Yeah, the first little bit, we were sort of waiting because we knew it was good, but the first bit was like a lot just through sort of forests and stuff. But once we got up onto the top, man, I wish you could have come though, huh, bud? So that was the Tarn Shelf Circuit hike at Mountfield National Park. Definitely recommend. Yeah, put it on your list. Mm -hmm. That was such a beautiful hike. And obviously, yeah, it is a whole lot easier when you can have friends watch your dog if you do mm -hmm. have a nice little furry friend. But with this colder weather we've been having, it's also been, we've also sort of been 
worrying about making sure Leah is warm enough, particularly mm -hmm. at nights, because with our setup, yeah, <laughs> with our setup, we've got obviously we sleep in the tent and Leah sleeps down here. And being just an old Land Rover, it's not exactly like heavily insulated or anything. Mm -hmm. So we've had some pretty fresh nights up in the tent. So we just wanted to make sure Leo's not too cold down here. So because of that, we ended up getting this guy, Waggle. Yeah. <laughs> so this is Waggle, <laughs> you like it? <laughs> so what this does is it monitors the temperature and humidity every single second. And then it sends alerts to your phone through an app if that temperature is too low or too high or the humidity is too low or too high. Mm. So it's basically peace of mind knowing that if you have to leave your dog in your RV or your car for any situation, you have that peace of mind to know that you're <laughs> they're nice and comfortable and safe. Yeah, and so, sometimes it is hard, like, because then you can also, obviously, if it's not outside that alert, you can just go into the app and have a look and just see mm. what the temperature is of this space because depending on if we've been in or out of the water or we've got really hot or we're actually really cold it's hard to judge how cold the temperature will be in here mm. so if it's sort of around bedtime and it feels really cold like we have done before getting this is we've just sort of erred on the side of caution and carried old leo up and had a little bit of a sleepover in the rooftop tent but it's nice to know that it is within a comfortable range for him and then it yeah. also works if you know we're going in grocery shopping and it's quite a warm day or there's no real shaded car park spots or we've got some running around to do in town where he needs to just hang out in the back here for a little bit it's nice to know that we can monitor the temperature if it seems really hot we can turn the fan on open more windows mm. up and if it seems to get extra hot or we're taking a bit longer we'll get an alert on our phones mm. and then we can just straight away come back and make sure that he's not too uncomfortable <laughs> oh little guy yeah <laughs> Yeah, so this is something that, yeah, we've realized over time that we do need um, because we do actually like live on the road and this is Leo's home as mm -hmm. much as it is ours. We want to make sure that he is nice and comfortable. If you're interested in getting one of these in our description below, we do have a discount. So go grab yourself one of these. Definitely recommend. Yeah. Leo likes it. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Yeah, you do. Oh. Oh. <laughs> He's like, where? Where is it? <laughs> now. It's time to head back to the coast. All right, we've made it back to the coast. It is a pearler of a day, and there's a tiny, tiny little bit of a wave. So yet another thing we have to think about when it comes to having a dog on the road is obviously number one, is it a dog friendly beach? Which sometimes we've found a lot of beaches aren't actually dog friendly, which has meant that we just I've had to give it a miss, which is fine. It's the price you pay for these little divas. But most of the times we'll just go surfing on beaches that we can. But for that, we just have this little spiky thing. You just whack in the sand. He's got a nice long lead, so you can just prop it in, tie him up, but always make sure he's tied first. Cause I feel bad if we just have him tied up there and he's busting to have a run. So normally it'll be tie him up, give him a big old run, get him in the water, and then get him nice in a settled spot we go enjoy ourselves, have a wave, and he just chills out. Sometimes I imagine it would be harder teaching them as an adult, but because this is all he's ever done, it's been pretty straightforward and super easy for him. He loves it. And then while they're running around, I will fill up his bowl so he has plenty of water to drink. We also, if it's really sunny out, we'll put an umbrella up, but the sun's at such an angle that he already will have so much shade. So just top up all his water for him. And then we head on out. Now the good thing is that we will just be right out there so we can check on him see him out in the surf, make sure everything's okay. We would only do this because we can actually see him. If we didn't have eyes on him, we wouldn't feel comfortable doing this. But it's really nice that like we can both go out for a surf together. He's chill, he'll sleep, and everything's really good. Yeah. How was that? Was that nice? Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. Ah, I think you could. Oh.
See you soon. Did you have a good beach day, bud? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was fun, huh? Yeah. Just got to a nice little uh, free camp in the forest just to hide away a little bit, which is another sort of consideration with a dog. Um, obviously, we've mentioned, I'm sure, quite a while ago now with how we sort of managed to find free camps, either wiki camps, camper mate, camper mate. Mm. Um, our, our the two series. main ones yeah. that we'll probably use, like generally you got no worries at all. But then normally the good thing about those is they'll always list if they are dog friendly or not as well. Um, also Google search can be handy, but yeah, you just don't want to roll into a spot that you think you're fine to go into. Maybe it, it was like off the beaten track or whatever to find out that it's actually not dog friendly. Mm. And this can be for a number of reasons. So a lot of times it is just to sort of preserve the wildlife, um, which is completely fair, but other times it can be even more sinister for your dog whether it be um, poisoning in the area, the big one in Australia being 1080 bait, mm. um, which is will kill the dog <laughs> and there's no cure for it as well. So um, definitely sort of a massive consideration is making sure that it is dog friendly, not only to abide by the rules to look after and conserve the natural environment, but also make sure your dog's not going to get exposed to anything nasty yeah also very important that your dog is well hopefully somewhat well trained mm. if you're going to take them on the road because you're constantly in new environments it's enough of a change for us and we actually understand what's going on mm. let alone your dog so you're constantly putting them in new situations surrounded by new environments new people new dogs if they don't have good recall you're gonna have a nightmare <laughs> and so it's okay like it's okay if you if it's not like, I mean, like all dogs are a work in progress as it is. Yeah. And it's okay if they're not, we're not, you're not expecting to have like the best dog in the world, mm. but if they're not amazing at it, just have them on leash. Cause it can be, may be the difference between chasing a, a wallaby or running onto a road. Like it's, it's such yeah. a foreign environment for them and so much stimulation, even if more often than not, they're quite good. It can take one really cool distraction for them to go haywire as any dog owner would know as well so definitely yeah training is a must mm -hmm. and even if it's a work in progress just making sure it's not like they are on leash and under control mm -hmm. because it's it is really hard for them. it's the one thing we think is like a negative i suppose of a dog on the road obviously they get to have the best time go to all these cool beaches and places however they don't have their nice quiet home that is their solitude and place of rest so even if we pulled up at like a beach car park or something it's leo's home is nigel but you've still got people coming and going mm. walking to and fro dogs everywhere people it's so full on for them and it's something that i think it's the one thing that you definitely do need to sort of take into account and make sure mm. you still try and find some space for them to have a bit of downtime to yeah. themselves that isn't so stimulating because it is hard particularly young dogs as well it's just so much going on for the little guys <laughs> not anymore though yeah. he's a seasoned veteran Look yeah at him. he's a gray nomad by now <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that wraps up our top tips for traveling with a dog if we we missed anything and you want to help out future travelers please list them below and if you have any other questions please list them below as well we really really hope this was helpful Again, yeah, traveling with a dog has been, it has its ups and downs, but mm -hmm. yeah, we absolutely love it and hope that this was helpful for you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>